but it's great to have you all here. We have a great program for you today. Oh, so many fantastic things going on in Pendergast. You know, the fact that we went distance learning doesn't matter. Our staff, and many are here today, so please, please, please be sure to thank them for the amazing work they're doing to keep our students educated. And they're just such a positive group of folks who are working really, really hard during these times. Not that they didn't before, but you know, as I've told you before, they had a whole 20 seconds to prepare to do distance learning, but they're pros, pros at it. So I'm just so proud of uh, the Pendergast team. And with that, let me introduce our amazing board members. And I think we have three of them with us today. So I'll start with Susan Sarin, our board president. Where are you, Susan? Words of wisdom. I'm right here. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I am so excited to see everyone. It's been, what, six, seven months since we were together? I mean, th that's a long, long time, and I really have missed you. And I'm glad you can all join today. I want to hop on what Dr. DeBlue said and thank our administrators, our teachers, our classified staff for all their hard work. They, they work tirelessly to make sure our students have what they need. And um, let's give them all a virtual round of applause. <laughs> And thank you. And I want to thank the parents, too, because they have been so supportive and they have been so patient. But right now, online learning is the best thing for all of our students. And I know our students are hanging in there. I've talked to a few and they they are positive and, you know, they're doing a great job. Our teachers are giving them all the encouragement and help that they need. And to our community partners, thank you for hanging in there with us. We do, as always, appreciate your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, again, I'm glad everybody joined us today. It's so fantastic seeing you. Um, this Lunch and Learn will be great. Please enjoy. Thank you, Susan. We appreciate you. And let's see, we also have Hilda Ortega Rosales. Where are you, Hilda? I'm here. Thank you very much, Dr. Babu and President. Karen. I too am very excited about today. Um, I want to echo what our superintendent has said and what my president has said. Uh, we're, we're very appreciative of everything that everyone is doing. Our students, our staff, our parents, all our uh, business partners. We are truly a village um, trying to raise our, our children, but we want to do it in a very, very safe, safe approach. And so bear with us. Uh, your interests are truly what we are um, focusing on. Uh, and I'm excited about today. Uh, some great, great opportunities for us to, um, to continue to uh, enjoy our company, even if it's through Zoom and virtual hugs. Thank you. Thank you, Hilda. We appreciate you. Uh, virtual hugs to you, too. And we also have Senator Casada. Where are you, Senator Casada? Hello, Dr. DeBlue. Thank you for having me. And uh, I just want to echo the words of my wonderful colleagues, uh, Ms. Ortega Rosales and Ms. Saren. Uh, everything they said is 100% uh, correct. I echo all of that. Uh, thank you for hanging in there with us as we as we uh, manage and maneuver this this new this new reality that we're dealing with. Uh, and and thank you for for coming together and joining us here today. I see we've got. 106 people with us. That, that's fantastic. It's great to see uh, such great participation. Uh, and I want to encourage you all to continue to interact with each other uh, and, and keep those, those social relationships uh, alive and strong because that's really important. And our kids need that too. And so as we struggle to find ways to do that, this is a great way to do that. So thank you for participating. And I will close out just by saying thank you. And thank you to uh, Superintendent Watson for joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Lou. Thank you, Martin. We appreciate you as well. Yes, we have an excellent program today, sponsored by the Glendale Chamber of Commerce, our favorite chamber, and by Orchid Winslow, amazing, amazing partners that we have. And with that, we do have a special guest presentation today. I'm excited to hear everything he has to say. I'd like to introduce you to the Maricopa County School Superintendent, Steve Watson, and let's hear his words of wisdom. Steve, you're on. Hey, thank you very much. It's, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I'm not sure um, how wise my words really are, but uh, 
I'm good at celebrations and having a good time. And uh, one thing that I'd like to bring and celebrate with Pendergast today is I have the honor as the Maricopa County School Superintendent to award what's called the Exemplary Principal Award. And uh, if I do say so myself, it's, it's kind of a big deal. Uh, Maricopa County, we have 4.4 million people, 726,000 K-12 students, and 1,200 schools. And so we are constantly trying to track down those, those best principals uh, who are uh, creating an environment for their kids and for their teachers to be the most successful. And we found one here in uh, Pendergast. And I'd like to honor uh, Jill Helland um, as our exemplary principal award winner for 2020. And our team came out and some of the things that we saw with Jill is she's a transformational leader. Um, the social, emotional, and academic well-beings of students is at the heart of every decision she makes. She's a strong instructional leader. Uh, she uses data intentionally and involves all stakeholders. And it, that results in shared ownership of the data and the culture and a learning and collaboration and then just joy at school. Now, that's, that's coming from me and my team, but more importantly, um, it's important to hear what her teachers say about her. Um, her teachers say she's knowledgeable, she's loving and supportive. She gives great feedback and pushes us to be better teachers while also celebrating our strengths and building people up. She is solutions-based, hears all perspectives. She's kind, truthful, and direct. It's magical to see in action. She's a good person and she really and truly cares. People feel respected and valued and never want to leave our school. And to that point, she has a teacher retention rate uh, around 98%. So that speaks volumes to Jill and the work that she's doing. And so it's my honor to present, and we'll get this to you in person, but to present the 2020 Exemplary Principal Award to Jill Helland. Thank you. Jill, we're so proud of you and know that we believe in you. Uh, thank you, Superintendent Steve Watson. We really appreciate um, what you do for education and recognizing one of our very best. We are blessed at Pendergast to have an incredible, incredible team uh, from custodians and bus drivers and, oh, you name it, and principals and cabinet and board members. We are just one lucky district, and we couldn't be prouder of uh, of Jill. So Jill, you make us proud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve Watson. And we'll be celebrating forever and in person really, really soon, we hope. So thanks again. There she is. Give another round of applause and love and welcome to Jill Helen. Can I, can I just add something? Thank you so much, uh, Steve Watson. But you know, the, the beauty is I am blessed with the most amazing team ever. I mean, exemplar you know any honor it has to go to the whole school we have 87 amazing staff members who are just phenomenal who care and are passionate and um and i have the best ever assistant principal my sidekick and partner in crime so really it's it's a celebration for all of us because it truly is a team effort and i am so blessed to work with incredible human beings who just care and teach their hearts out every day and give 200 percent so i feel totally blessed to work with them and they together make the magic happen at garden lake so thank you to my amazing team oh that's so sweet thank you we love you garden lakes you guys are awesome congratulations once again enjoy your day i would say take the rest of the day off but i can't do gift of public funds so meanwhile i'll just say i love you okay all righty once again thank you to the glendale chamber of commerce and somebody's going to be the lucky winner of i think it's two round trip tickets to southwest i don't know netta won last time so i'm just a little curious about what's going to happen today but also again our amazing um, architects worked at Winslow. thank you for all you do for us and for supporting pendergast netta Thank you so much. We have a wonderful program plan for you today. We're so thrilled to have 108 people participating in our Lunch and Learn today, which really is a tribute to all of our community members, our teachers, staff members, everybody. Once again, congratulations to Jill Helen, a role model for all of us. And now I want to introduce Dr. Jennifer Cruz, our Chief Academic Officer, 
and Dr. Gwen Marr, our Director of Curriculum and Innovation. And they're going to talk a little bit about what is distance learning. And then we're going to take you on a field trip. So go right ahead, Jen and Gwen. We're ready to hear from you. Right. Welcome, thank you so much. And congratulations, Jill. We are so proud of your leadership and thankful to have you in the system. So shout out to you. We, we appreciate all the work that you do on behalf of our kids. Um, good afternoon, if we haven't met, I'm Jen Cruz. I'm the Chief Academic Officer. Uh, I'm very excited to introduce you to Dr. Gwen Marr, who is our new Director of Curriculum and Innovation. She's gonna talk us through a little bit about what distance learning looks like, what, what some of our plans were for distance learning, and then I'll jump in at the end. And if you have any questions, feel free to dive in while we're talking and we'll be sure to answer them as we go. Dr. Marr? Good afternoon, community partners, esteemed board, Dr. DeBlue, and the amazing staff at Pendergast, the family, students that I am honored to work alongside. Um, it is very hard to follow that. I wish that we could just celebrate and hand out awards all morning because, man, is that a good feeling. Jill, you truly deserved. Congratulations. I promise to be short and brief because we really want to get to the teachers and the kids. They're way more exciting. So our general expectations for distance learning are really that we provide a well-organized, um, really robust experience for families. Um, all of our classrooms are expected to have agendas where coursework and due dates are, are readily accessible for families, particularly for parents who have been working all day and want to understand what their students have done. Um, we also ensure that all of our lessons are recorded via Zoom links so that they can access those materials later on and that our teachers are providing timely feedback to students so they know where they are in their learning. So for kindergarten through second grade, um, we really uh, want to offer asynchronous lessons, or I'm sorry, synchronous lessons, so that's with the teachers, for about 15 to 25 minutes. We do not want long extended lessons where students are online for the full, for the full day. So we really want to ensure that they're very brief and short mini lessons. Um, they also have all of their coursework on a platform called Seesaw, and teachers have been trained in that, and that is where students will access all of their materials. And you will also see an array of online tools, um, including a new one called CAPIT, which is our new core phonics program that is truly um, wonderful for this distance learning, but also will incorporate when we move back into brick and mortar setting. Our third through fifth graders will experience slightly longer synchronous lessons for, for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, again, they're a little bit older, their attention spans might be a little bit longer, we hope, right? And so um, we provide slightly longer um, mini lessons and opportunities for them to interact. Um, and they also um, have their lessons on what we call uh, Google Classroom. So all of their materials will be offered um, and, and presented through the Google Suites. And you will also see online tools um, used with third through fifth graders such as Nearpod or Edpuzzle. And this really enhances the learning experience for distance learners and really is um, a, an avenue in which we bring alive the learning for our students. And lastly, our sixth through eighth grade students will experience um, synchronous lessons anywhere between 30 to 40 minutes. I wanna note that teachers are available outside of these 30 to 40 minute lessons um, for office hours and support for the work that students are to do on their own. Um, but this is the time in which teachers are actually delivering instruction. We are also with our sixth to eighth grade uh, teachers, we're piloting two new um, curricular resources um, for both ELA and math that go very well with distance learning and again will be great for when we return to brick and mortar. You will also see some online tools being utilized such as assessments, Desmos, or defined learning. The last thing I'd like to note is that we also have available a program called Lexia that is an intervention software for all of our students so that we ensure that we reach every learner. Dr. Cruz? Those business partners, I think you all will appreciate that you know, we needed to pivot to make sure that we were still meeting our customers' needs as we you know, had a pretty significant change in context. Um, and so the, the investment that we did were to try and best enable us to 
pivot into a new type of learning situation, but that would also amplify our work when we're back face to face. So we were trying to make some, you know, some different kinds of investments, I think, than, than what you might see other organizations do. But for us, this was an opportunity to innovate and do something different and meet our kids' needs and hopefully get some materials in the hands of our teachers that they had long been requesting. So we, we tried to take this as an opportunity and embrace the weirdness as much as we could and then move forward productively. Um, so one of the things that that is obviously required of us and that you know we're we're happy to have an opportunity to do is to make sure that for our students with disabilities or our students who are otherwise exceptional they might be English language learners they might excuse me, students identified as gifted, that we're still providing support and service for them we do have all the same federal requirements online as we do face to face. So um, that has been a real challenge for us to try and make sure that we're meeting the needs of those exceptional kids and something that we're working hard to do all the time. Um, we also made district devices available. And uh, on the next slide, you'll see that we had some uh, really fantastic grants come through. Some different partnerships came through with Valley of the Sun United Way, also with Intel and FirstBook. So we've been able to push devices out to our families who needed that support. We've been able to get internet access to families who needed that support. Um, a lot of what we've been doing is helping our parents navigate some different social services that they might never have needed to access before and might have been unfamiliar to them. So our school social workers have been busy, our counselors and principals have been extremely busy making sure that parents understand what resources are out there in the community to help them get through this time and hopefully provide some additional support for their families. Um, so we've been, we've been trying to do all the things that we can do to innovate, like I said, and, and pivot into our new reality and make sure that we keep kids learning and, and we're meeting our customer needs. So that is briefly what we've been doing for online learning. We created some distance learning guides. Again, we needed some, some collateral to support families through, you know, this sudden shift. Um, and those are, those are really the big buckets, I think, of the things that we've been doing. I'm not sure if, if there are any questions, you can feel free to, to chat them. You will see that when we come back, we might be running our sports seasons uh, concurrently. Um, you know, we're, we're not going to skip our seasons, but we might have a really, really busy spring or whenever, you know, the kiddos are finally able to return. Um, you'll see us get busy really quickly. So that's, that's kind of the, the general overview. Um, great question about FAPE. What does FAPE mean? Um, and that's, uh, sorry about that language. We're so used to using acronyms in education that, um, that we sometimes forget. But a free and public education is what is called for um, for every state to provide every student living in the district. So free and public education is FAPE. And, and uh, we're deeply committed to making sure that that happens for every single student. Thank you both. Excellent overview about what distance learning is. And I can tell you, as, as was stated earlier, our teachers, our staff members, our principal, you know, our district office staff, they're just working really hard to provide an outstanding education and they've done an amazing job. But we're about to take you on a field trip. So it's really nice that we can do that so that you can go on a field trip with us and you don't have to leave the comfort of your home or your office or wherever you are. So I would like to now introduce Matt Williams, who's the principal of Desert Mirage Elementary, John Mitnis, the assistant principal, and our fabulous Desert Mirage teacher, teachers and students that are gonna take us on a virtual field trip so you can see distance learning in action. So take it away, Desert Mirage. Good morning, Madam President, esteemed members of our governing board, Dr. DeBlue, and members of our partnership community. Uh, so excited for you to see virtual learning at Desert Mirage. Uh, I, I love what Hilda said, it takes a village. And we always say that in education, but right now during these times, it really resonates even higher. It really does. I wanna thank our governing board, uh, Dr. DeBlue, Dr. Cruz, and Team Pendergast for spending countless hours ensuring our students and community are safe. It is appreciated on behalf of Desert Mirage, so thank you. I also wanna thank my admin partner, Mr. Mittness, and my goodness, the teachers, they're on the front line. God bless you, let's give them a round of applause to the teachers. And our parents, I see some parents online, and then the cute part of all of this, our students, and I see our students online as well. So a little bit about Desert Mirage, we're preschool through eighth grade. We have a huge concentration of STEAM academies 
And our goal is to grow that steam at Desert Mirage. And we are not going to let a pandemic stop us. And so what you will be seeing today is instruction that is high quality, it's rigorous. We did not want to skip a beat at Desert Mirage, nor did any of our other Pendergast schools. Uh, you're going to see virtual learning in action. You're going to see SEL, which is social emotional learning. You're going to learn about rainbow breathing with Miss Salado. Uh, first grade, Miss Salado, that's where we're going to start today. And her academy is Bobcats on Broadway, and it's sponsored by Arizona Broadway Theater. And you're going to see a lot of relevant themes in their instruction today. They're going to be talking, doing a unit on meeting the wants and needs of a community. And then you'll take a trip up to seventh grade, uh, our Innovation Design and Entrepreneurship Academy, Next Level Leadership, sponsored by Jeremy Anderson. And they're talking about social entrepreneurship and how to bring change to a community. So, so relevant, especially in these times. And then we will conclude our field trip with our Health, Medical, and Forensic Sciences Academy sponsored by Banner Children's. And they are going to be talking about uh, the periodic table and some electromagnets. So we welcome you. We could not do it without the partners. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, boys and girls, let's get our bodies and our brains ready to learn. Take three rainbow breaths with me. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. One more time. Breathe in. And out. Great job, friends. Remember, we have eyes on the screen, listening ears, voices off for now, and we have calm, quiet hands and bodies for listening and learning. All right, guys, we are ready to learn. Let's go ahead and open up our social studies lesson. Okay, boys and girls, the target for today is I can identify the wants and needs of my community and create a way to provide them, okay? The next word is goods. Goods is anything that you can buy. So if you go to the grocery store and you buy some fruit, are those goods? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Good job, guys, yes. I love the way I saw all those thumbs go up. Let's put a marble in our marble jar. Fantastic job, guys. Woohoo! I love Ashley giving those two woohoo arms up. Good job, Ashley. Um, so let's go ahead and read our text, Goods and Services Around Town. Okay, so if he buys a snow cone, remember we talked about goods and services. Goods are things you can buy. Services are things that you can do, and people will pay you to do it. So is a snow cone a service or a good? Isabel, what do you think? I think the snow cone is a good. And how do you know? Because it costs money and um, it is food. Isabel, can you kiss your brain twice, once for answering and once for speaking in a complete bobcat sentence? Great job, honey. Uh -huh. When you guys were in your breakout rooms, I heard friends sharing some really good stuff. People want toys. I heard somebody say that people want a TV, right? Did anybody else share another want in their breakout room? Sophia, what else did you say people want? People want water. Oh, is water something people want or something people need? Need. Need. Good job, honey. So I'm going to put water in blue because that is a need. Great job. Donuts. Donuts. Yeah, I know a lot of people like donuts. My goodness, look at all my hands. I love this participation, guys. I'm going to put another marble in the marble jar for all of my hands that I have up. So remember, our target for today was I can identify the wants and needs of my community. We've done that part, right? We've identified wants and needs, but it also says I can create a way to provide them. We haven't done that part yet. That's the part that you're going to do for your project today. Okay, so, so far we've talked about identifying wants and needs. 
but your project today is to create a way to provide a want or a need to your community. I really want to do hair like my sister, Kilana. She owns a hair salon. I'd like to do that too. Do you need a haircut? I do need a haircut. Do you take walk-ins? I do. I just need your name. Awesome. What time are you open? Nine to nine. Let's fix that hair salon. Whoa, and what's the name of that? A nice one. I will drive around and sell donuts to my community. Community, they are delicious. Welcome to Ashley's Rise and Shine. It's donut time, donut truck. I'll be coming to your neighborhood soon. I have all kinds of donuts, they are good. See you then! Business because this Henry's ice cream truck is filled with delicious ice cream. <gasps> it's hot day. They might want to get into Henry's ice cream truck. It's filled with delicious ice cream. And it costs for one dollar. <laughs> I chose this business because I want people to buy food and eat and not be hungry. Hi, I'm Vanna and I want you to come to my food truck. It's the best food truck in the world. I have french fries, I have cheeseburgers, I have burgers, and I have soda. And I want you to come and get those. It's a really good price. I chose this business because I love dogs. They should buy from me because what if they don't have kids? So, and they don't want to be lonely. So that's why they should buy from me. I chose this business because my dad hates when weeds grow in our yard so i want to help people get rid of them are you tired of your hla sending you letters about your weeds Call on and order and we will take them down. Call 867-5309. I love that. Thank you so much. So that, thank you. A big shout out to Ms. Salato and her class. And we do have Ms. Salato online right now, as well as two of her ambassadors. Between a little commercial break, between uh, moving up to the next grade level, um, do we have any questions that we, uh, we have about a minute? Um, Ms. Salato, would you like to say anything about your class? Because um, now is your time. I have a million things to say about my class, but I'll try to keep it brief. These first graders are some of the most amazing students I have ever encountered in my whole life. They are persevering and they are working so hard to, uh, to, uh, to improve and to grow and to learn during this distance learning time. And they're just blowing my mind, like far surpassing any expectations that I had had. I set the bar pretty high, but they are just blowing these activities and their, their distance learning out of the water. Um, what I loved about this activity is it gave us the opportunity not only to show their understanding, but to identify um, misunderstandings as well. And we went back and we talked about it. We had probably 12 
different kinds of food trucks in our town. And so then we looked at that and we said, we've got lots of food and these kinds of services to provide our town. So now what's missing? What wants and needs do we still have left? So then we went back and we kind of discussed that and shared. And then they had another opportunity to add something else to our community as well to, to further meet wants and needs. So um, when the project's over, it's not just one and done. We continue using these projects to, um, to increase our understanding and to continue to grow and to dive deeper into these standards that they're working on. Um, but I would love if anyone has a question for, I've got my amazing ambassadors, Ashley and Henry on with me, and they have been so excited to be here today. Um, they're very thankful that they were invited to come today. So if anybody has a question they would like to ask Ashley or Henry, I'm, they are prepared to talk today. So we would love to hear from you. Um, so I gave them a, the afternoon. So we have social studies at the end of the day um, to create our videos. So we did our 20 minute mini lesson and then they kind of had the rest of the afternoon to, um, to work and do, do their activity. So um, they were to draw and identify their, their business to meet the wants and needs. And then they were to make a commercial to convince people to go and buy from them. Um, so they kind of had the whole afternoon to take as long as they wanted. Um, we have a question from Dr. DeBlue. She would like to know how you guys are liking distance learning. When we start with Ashley and then Henry. Ashley, can you tell us what, uh, how do you like distance learning and what's the best part? What I like most about virtual learning is that Mrs. Salado and my class are still all together on Zoom. I like how I can do my work on Seesaw by myself, but if I need help, my teacher is there. I like how my class still learns and does activities all together. Let's give a round of applause for Ashley. Ashley, my favorite thing about what you shared is that you spoke in complete sentences because Bobcats always speak in complete sentences. Thank you, Ashley. And then Henry, we'd love to hear from you as well. What? How do you like distance learning? What's your favorite part? What's the best thing about it? Um, I like seeing you guys so much, which I really wish the coronavirus Stop. <laughs> I'm looking at my green card. I agree, Henry. I wish it would stop too. We love you. What All is right. your favorite thing about distance learning, though, Henry? Um, I love Imagine Math, Imagine Math Facts, mm -hmm. um, Lexa Core 5, and seeing my friends and working on. Reading eggs. Reading eggs. Mm -hmm. And reading eggs. Awesome. And then we had one more question I saw. What did you guys like about this project? Henry, since you're already unmuted, would you care to share what you liked about doing your um, creating a business project? Sure. Would you like? Um, Tell them. I know what it was. It was the commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Yes, and we are part of, we are the Bobcats on Broadway Academy, so I do try to give students lots of opportunities to speak um, and present and act and have fun in those ways. Thank you, Henry. Ashley, what did you like about that project? I liked how we were all um, cr creative and that we made our community. Awesome, Ashley. Thank you so much. I love that answer. Thank you, Ashley, and thank you, Henry, for being here to answer those questions today. Um, I know that we're pressed for time, so I don't know if I need to cut myself off thank now or... No, thank you, Ms. Salado, <laughs> and thank you to your student ambassadors. Now we are going to go up to Ms. Bachner's class. So we're going up to seventh grade right now. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sure, I can share. 
Uh, today, I'm here to talk about the problem of littering. This issue is important to me because it means that we will have a cleaner school and a and more environmentally friend, safe place. My plan of action is to spread the word about how the campus is becoming more dirtier by each year. And if we don't stop, we might not be able to go back. I would most likely put posters around the campus up high, spreading the word to not litter because it is hurting the environment and the safety of others. Littering is a problem because 2.6 trillion pounds of trash are in the world right now, and people didn't think it was a problem back then, but look where we are right now. 2.6 million, 2.6 trillion pounds of trash, that is over 100 times the amount of people on earth. If you listen to my plan, we could make our school a cleaner and more eco-friendly campus. This would also help save many lives because over 100,000 marine animals die every year because of litter. Not to mention, this also kills people because they drink dirty water and get sick. Thank you for listening to my presentation and how I would reduce or prevent the amount of littering. I'm here to talk about food waste. This is very important to me because a little bit over 25,000 people are just because they don't have enough. Sometimes in lunch, I'll see people buy food and they will not throw it away. So what I want to do is I want to create a basket where people can put food that won't get bad and give it to the people who mostly need it. And what I want to plan to do is put it in every classroom and lunch and every week. I would have a company come and pick it up and give it to the people eat. So we'll have less people dying. And as I said, thank you for listening and I hope my plan works to save the world. Thank you. Okay, so the issue I'm going to be talking about is recycling. And the issue is important to me because I see it being a problem in my everyday life. For instance, in the cafeteria, I notice all the utensils, the bags they come with, and the trays that all get throw that all get thrown away. And that's really wasteful. And it should be important to everyone here because there would be less mining, logging, and querying. So there would be less air and water pollution. If we organize to change this issue, then it will save energy and reduce greenhouse gases which would help change. The problem is schools not putting time to get more recycling and teaching kids about the importance of recycling. To solve this major problem, I propose we put more recycling bins and make it so for every garbage, there will be a recycling bin. I would like to thank everyone for your time and hopefully make you think more about how else we can change the problem of not recycling, and there's no planet B. Today I'm here to talk about the problem of food waste, because it's a major problem issue, especially in the United States. In the United States alone, 72 billion pounds of food are thrown away each year. I would like to help this problem by starting with their schools. This issue is important to me, because if this doesn't stop, there will be unhealthy amounts of carbon dioxide and methane in the air. And I find it sad that there are people dying all over the world of hunger, and it's just being thrown away. It should be important to everyone, because everybody would be breathing dangerous air. And people should also know that over 9 million people die from starvation each year, and they need to know that they're just throwing away food. If we organize to change this issue, life will be better because there will be less pollution, trash buildup, and we will have overall better air quality. This is being caused by overbuying, overproduction, and food spoilage. To solve this problem, I propose that our first step is to buy what you need, plan out your meals, and compost food. I would like to take care everybody for listening to my presentation. I hope you join me to address the problem of food waste. I just wanted to uh, thank you both, Mr. Midness, Mr. Williams, for joining us. And um, this all started as a group project where we were brainstorming um, what kind of problems can we tackle? Um, how can we be revolutionaries and bring about change for the better of the world? And we started close 
and uh, then uh, everybody split up into different groups. There was a group uh, with food waste, a group of littering, a group for recycling. And then um, after they had their brainstorming done, they started uh, their individual speeches. And it's interesting to see how they go in different directions with the same starting topic or problem. So the different solutions, how we started was everybody brings something to the table. Everybody is special in a certain way. We all have skills, and if we work as a team, we need to utilize those skills that we have. Some of us are good in math. Some of us love writing. Some of us are great uh, artists. If we uh, consolidate all our skills, these teams are going to be the strongest moving forward. And uh, that's kind of where we're anchored in right now. Beautiful. Awesome. And we have, for the efforts of time, we do have Ms. Bachner on as well as a couple uh, of her ambassadors. And um, I, I would uh, just like to, each of her ambassadors just maybe talk about what they enjoy um, short, just if you can explain how, what you think about distance learning. How, how are you doing? I really enjoy it because I can learn at my own pace. There's yeah. less distraction and less peer pressure. <laughs> Nice. And we can we can work where we want also. Plus a better lunch. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and your other ambassador, go ahead. And we can do like stuff that we really like to do, like maybe like um we do this thing sometimes. Yeah. Like we do like imagine math. Um sometimes we do Lexia and other stuff that makes us happy and we can learn better. Wonderful. Wonderful. And Ms. Bachner, would you like to say any words? Thank you for doing all that you do here at DM. It's so appreciated. Uh, very quickly, uh, just uh, to give the background, we started, this is a social studies uh, project. We started with revolutions and what are revolutions and uh, scientific revolution, period of enlightenment, change, how change comes about, what change does to us. And uh, we looked at modern revolutionaries. And from there, the kids were like, um, okay, how is this with change? And I can't, what am I supposed to do? You know, I'm, I'm just a, a kid. I'm, and I'm like, no, we all can, uh, we just have to start slow and stay close and see what we can do. And that's where um, those ideas that were close to us, the littering, um, the campus, the lunches, uh, that was their brainstorming. So that's where it's coming from, revolutions. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bachner, so much. And last but certainly not least, we're moving on up to our seventh and eighth grade uh, Health, Medical, and Forensic Sciences Academy. The school year has started out differently. Although we are distant learning with Zoom, we are still learning. This quarter, we are studying chemistry. We started learning with atoms and matter. Then we moved on to studying the organization of the periodic table. Ms. Finney used class discussions, videos, teacher provided lessons, and student research. A long time ago, a man named Dimitri Mendeleev created a universal system to communicate about elements as they were discovered and as they still are studied. On a very basic level, the periodic table is a systematic organization of all the known elements. It is set up with a pattern moving across in periods. That is, they gain valence electrons moving from left to right. Another pattern moving down the columns or groups is the additions of energy, energy levels or shells. To demonstrate our understanding of this organization, we were tasked with creating our own unique version of a periodic table based on the theme of our own choosing. To show my understanding of the periodic table of elements is organized in periods, running across, and groups moving down, I made my own periodic table. I live for baseball, so of course I made my periodic table about the American and the National League's race for the World Series in 2020. So I will show you guys my periodic table right here. So this is my periodic table. So first place, Dodgers, second place, San Diego, third place, Colorado, for, uh, fourth place, San Francisco, and a fifth place, Diamondbacks. So first place, second place, third place, fourth place, and fifth place are the 
are the columns. So each team in first place is these right here, second place, third place, fourth place, and fifth place. And the periods are actually the divisions that these teams are in. So the NL West, the AL East, the American League Central, AL uh, West, NL Central, and National League East. So that is my periodic table. Hi, I'm Angelina from Mrs. Meta's 8th grade homeroom. And today I'm going to be talking about the periodic table. After I discovered that the periodic table was actually systematically organized, I decided to make the periodic table of celebrities and their yearly income. I chose some of my favorite celebrities and put them in families, or so-called groups. After I figured out which group they were in, I went ahead and found out how much money each of them made per year. Once I discovered that, I went ahead and put them in periods. So I have the first highest paid, the second highest paid, and so on all the way to the fifth highest paid. For example, Dwayne Johnson. He gets an average of $87.5 million per year. And if we go all the way down to Millie Bobby Brown, she gets an average of $8.4 million per year. To show my understanding of the organization of the periodic table of elements, I chose to make mine with my favorite hobby, video games. My table is organized by video game consoles going across the table in periods. And is organized into groups based on the years each version was released. We continued by learning different physical properties of the elements and how similar elements are grouped together. To show our understanding of physical properties of elements, we had to research as many elements as necessary to find one that we felt matched our personality. For example, am I malleable and bendable like a metal or brittle and set in my ways like a non-metal? Am I highly reactive or calm and inert on the inside? Do I like to be part of groups more like a conductor? Or would I rather be alone, just like an insulator? Once we took our personality survey and researched our elements until we found the one that fits us, then we designed a chemical personality mask. This mask project is one of my favorites. I put a lot of effort into it. First, I did not choose to do a typical mask Miss Meta has her students do. I decided to be relevant and make a COVID element personality mask. I chose the element antimony to rep represent me because it is malleable, reactive, and an insulator. I also chose it because it was black, and black is a color of protection, and I consider myself a protective person. On my mask, I have embroidered a battery, a pot, and paint because that is what antimony is used in the real world. Hi, I'm Angelina, and this is Meta's 8th grade homeroom, and this is my mask. My mask is based off of Stacium. I took a personality test to see what element I am most like. Some of the questions were, are you malleable? Do you change to get along with others or are you brittle? Are you set in your ways? Another question was, are you a conductor? Conductor meaning, do you like to work in groups? Or are you an insulator? Meaning, do you like to be more independent and alone? Some of the features on my mask is the lightning strike going through the forehead. And I chose to put a lightning strike because cesium is a conductor and conductors conduct um, heat and electricity. Another feature on my mask would be the 55 and the 55 represents the atomic number. On the other side, I have CS, and CS is the symbol for stasium. Some of the colors that I chose were gold and gray, a grayish silver color. Stasium tends to be a goldish silver color. It could come in both gold and silver, or it could be a mix. 
periodic elemental mask. Um, this is it right here. I chose to represent the element chromium because I feel it suits my personality the best. Um, the reason it's, it's silver all around the outside is because that's its natural state and color. Um, you'll see going along this way is an orangish color because uh, chromium helps rubies turn their color, which is red. And the screen down here, uh, it helps turn a treat, treated glass green. So chromium affects the treated gra glass. And the CR up here is the elemental abbreviation, which is also the first two letters of my name, so I thought that was cool. And as well as the 24 down here, that represents the atomic number, which just happens to be the day of my birthday. Hello, I'm Kishan from 7th grade science. This year has been pretty exciting. So far in science, we have learned about magnets and electromagnetism. In this first week's lesson, we learned the properties of magnets. For example, they all have north and south poles, can be made from iron, nickel, and cobalt, and can attract and repel. As we were learning all about magnets, we were given a student choice project where we could either write a book, a comic strip, or a poem about magnetism. I wrote a small chapter book where my superhero, Dr. Magneta, gets injected by liquid metal at the age of 14. She goes on a lot of adventures using her powers to save others. She uses her powers to lift anything that is magnetic by attraction to save others. In the second week's lessons, we learned that electricity produces magnetic fields and that is how electromagnets can be made. As electrons flow through a copper wire, that is electricity, it produces a magnetic field around the wire. As an iron nail is placed inside of the electrified copper wire, the iron will become magnetized. I am made a magnet from copper wire, a bolt, and a battery. The bolt is wrapped around copper wire, which is attached to the battery, which charges which charges the bolt with electricity with electricity so I can pick up magnet so I can so it turns it into a magnet. It can hold multiples, I think. And as you can see that it can hold most a lot of magnets depending how charged it is. And the longer you wait for it to charge up, the more stronger it gets. <laughs> so I made an electromagnet. Hi, my name is Isaiah Vides, and I will be telling you how electromagnets work and some examples of everyday objects with electromagnets in them. Electromagnets are made from coils of wire with electricity flowing through them. Moving, char moving charges create magnetic fields, so when the wire has electricity flowing through them, the wire acts like a magnet. Some examples of everyday objects with electromagnets in them are speakers, motors, and generators. So I decided to make the magnetic experiment, and I have a D battery, I have an iron nail, and it's wrapped around with copper wire. And I have paper clips as my magnetic material. And as you can tell, it's magnetic. And this is because the battery passes electricity through the wire. And even when you take the battery away, it's still a small bit magnetic. Though it's not very. We are trying not to get down about not being in our schools. We are making the most with our circumstances. Way to go, Miss Meta, and your class. So we'll appreciate it. Let's give her a round of applause. And I know we're crunched for time, but Janet, I know you and your ambassadors are on. Janet, would you like to say anything and then have your ambassador say a couple words? Uh, yes, um, I'm very proud of the students. Um, the most important thing for me was to make sure they could still do uh, projects even though we're at home. Um, some of them are doing projects, but they also have an alternate assignment that would require them to research and talk about something instead of building something. 
but I'll let Chris and Tara, you guys can talk about what you're doing in distance learning. Okay, so uh, I'm Chris. Um, I feel like so far this year, uh, learning has been a bit difficult, but overall I'm still glad that we're still allowed to do what we've been looking forward to since sixth grade. Uh, we've been seeing all these eighth graders doing certain projects and we keep asking, when do we get to do those? And so I'm just glad that even though circumstances are different now, we're still allowed to do what we've been wanting to do for so long. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely agree with Chris, but I also think that because of the distance learning, it's helped us learn how to use the tools that are given to us and depend on ourselves and the people around us more than usual. Wow. So proud of you guys. So proud. Thank you for this opportunity, Dr. DeBlue and our senior governing board. So appreciated. Very proud of Desert Mirage teachers and our students. Wow, thanks to all of you. I am speechless. First of all, I have to learn where to register to attend one of these classes because I'm obviously a little behind on call, uh, periodic tables, recycling, these businesses. Oh my God, I don't have those skills. You guys are amazing. Um, Ms. Salato, Ms. Faulkner, Ms. Meta, you are Pendergast Gems. We are so glad you're part of our district and for those out there who don't believe that distance learning is working, you just saw the perfect model of what it takes to continue the education of students even through this pandemic. Students, you're my favorite part of all this. Okay, I love everybody else, but students, you are my favorite part of all this. You are brilliant scholars, and I know you're gonna rule the world, so I'm, ah, I love you, I believe in you, you're amazing, continue learning, and I cannot wait till you're back in school so I can go pinch you and hug you if that's okay with you, because you are incredible. Uh, the leadership at Desert Mirage, Mr. Williams, Mr. Mitness, wow, I don't, I don't know what else to say, you're incredible. And you know, we couldn't do all of this without our amazing partners. I know Matthew was with us from Corning. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting our STEAM Academies. Jeremy Anderson and Banner Children, uh, Arizona Broadway Theater. We have great, great partners who help a lot of this uh, come come true for us so you're amazing i'm hungry because of all that donut and ice cream and burgers i gotta tell you i'm gonna be a better recycler after today and the periodic tables okay i i need instruction before i can go there so thank you thank you thank you you are all amazing parents thank you for your support for hanging with us through these times we believe in you and, and we really appreciate you so netta what do we have next well, Dr. DeBlue, we're going to let you introduce the Glendale Chamber as the, the, uh, the former chair of the Glendale Chamber. And we have a raffle. We're going to see who won the raffle. So please go right ahead. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited. Uh, yes, we are big time members of the best chamber in the world, the Glendale Chamber. If you are not a member or if you haven't seen what they've done, check their website and the great thing they do. Uh, Robert Hyde is the executive and CEO of the chamber. He's incredible. I know Pendergast is his favorite. Um, we just won't tell the world that, but he treats us fabulous. And we're so thankful that he donated uh, two tickets to Southwest Airlines and some lucky winner is gonna get those today. So thank you, Glendale Win uh, Chamber. I think we have Justine with us. Yes, thank you. Uh, you, you Hi, Justine. And we love working with you, as you know. So I do, I have, um, all this paper I'm going to recycle now and I'm going to pull the raffle. All right, let's see. Drum roll! And I don't believe she's on the call. Cindy Jarnigan? Oh, wow! Congratulations, Cindy! Yes, yeah, Cindy was not able on? to make it, but we're so thrilled that she's won. She told us she was going to purchase raffle tickets. <laughs> so thank you, Justine, yes. the Glendale Chamber. We'll let Cindy know, and she'll be absolutely thrilled. She can go visit her kids, so she'll yes. be very, very happy. And Carrie said that we're going to send the tickets to Cindy, so the voucher. So okay. thank you, Glendale Chamber. We so appreciate you. And thank you, everybody, thank you. for participating today. Our foundation will benefit from that. And we just want to tell you about what's coming up for our next virtual 
community lunch and learn. We will be posting this video so that you can see it. You can share it on social media. If you're not following Pendergast on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, now's your time to do that so you can see these videos. We're so grateful to everybody for being here today. Thank you to the Pendergast team, everybody who made it happen today. On that, uh, on that, I want to give a shout out to the Pendergast Community Foundation. They are so amazing. So selling these tickets was for them and all the great things they do for our teacher, staff, and community. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Foundation. We love you. Absolutely. And so our next Lunch and Learn is coming up on Tuesday, November the 17th at 11 a.m. Once again, we'll send out the information and so you can register. And the topic is going to be social and emotional learning. We're going to talk about Speak Up, Stand Up, Save a Life and UBU with David Simmons. It's going to be fun. It's going to be engaging. You're going to get to interact with our students and our counselors. And we're very, very grateful for you for attending. Thank you, Superintendent Watson. Congratulations to Helen, to everybody who made this, made this happen today. We are Pendergast, the district that believes in you. Have a great day, and thank you, everybody, for being here.